Happy Friday and welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. My name is Emma and today I'm going to talk to you about some of the books I read recently that came out in the last few months and I'm going to tell you my opinion on whether or not they are worth your money. The first book on my list is The Vanishing of Audrey Wilde by Eve Chase and this one came out on the 13th of July. If you're in the States it came out and it was called The Wildlings I believe. This is a really gentle and beautifully written mystery. It's told between two parallel timelines all set in the same house. One of them is in the past, this group of sisters moving into the house after the disappearance of their cousin Audrey, and the other one is present day, a woman moving into the house with her husband, her daughter and her stepdaughter and there's a lot of family tension going on. But what makes it particularly exciting is that the very first scene that we read is the sisters at the end of their summer in the house trying to dispose of a body. It's a little bit creepy, a little bit sad. Is this one worth a buy? I'm gonna say yes, it definitely is. I really enjoyed this one. It was a great one to read on holiday over the summer, but I actually think it's gonna be a really cozy one for reading in the evenings in an armchair as the nights get colder. So. I would definitely recommend you go out and get that one if you're in the mood for a gentle and engaging mystery. Next up is The Luster of Lost Things by Sophie Chen Keller and this one came out on the 8th of August. Now this has such a beautiful premise, it's about a young boy who has a communication disorder and sees the world in a very unique and magical way. And he has this amazing magical skill for finding lost things. He sees lights kind of pointing him to where they are. It's very beautifully written, I really enjoyed that. And his mother owns a bakery where all the pastries are enchanted. All the magic in the bakery comes from this book, which the young boy Walter's father gave to them. And one day the book goes missing and all of the magic in the bakery stops. Suddenly they find themselves at threat of getting evicted and Walter has one day to find the book and bring magic back to the bakery. Really lovely concept but unfortunately the concept didn't really hold up for me throughout the whole book. I would say that the beginning section and the ending were absolutely gorgeous, the ending was quite emotional really, but the middle I really struggled with. I did actually put the book down, read some other things and then come back to it. So, is this book worth a buy? I'm going to have to put this down as a maybe. It's not going to be one of my top books of the year, but there is something very unique and special about it. I really want to support it because it was such a sweet idea, but it didn't quite work for me. Another book that came out on the 8th of August was Emma in the Night by Wendy Walker. Now, I read a book by Wendy Walker before called All Is Not Forgotten, which was so creepy. It was one of the creepiest thrillers I've ever read with such sinister characters. So I was really, really excited for Emma in the Night and it was a little bit of a letdown. I did enjoy it while I was reading it and it still has what Wendy Walker is good at. It's still gripping, it's still twisty and it still has these creepy characters, but it just wasn't quite such a memorable story I guess. But I did read this one all in one day, so if you're looking for a thriller to just grip you for one weekend day of reading, then this will be a fun one. In conclusion, is this one worth a buy? I'm gonna say again maybe, I think it really depends on the reader. It's a mysterious, engaging, psychological thriller, you will have a fun time when you read this book, you just might not remember it as your favourite thriller of all time. Okay, next up I have Every Last Lie by Mary Kubica, and this one came out on the 10th of August. This is about a woman whose husband dies in a car crash and her young daughter was also in the car with him but is miraculously unharmed. Clara, who's the main character, thought that she and her husband had the perfect life but in the aftermath of his death, more and more secrets begin to emerge. I went into this one expecting a thriller because, I mean, look at that cover, it is very much marketed as a thriller but actually what I got was this rather sad story of this couple and the things that dishonesty can lead to and break down in what's otherwise a very loving relationship. It could almost have been quite Anne Tylerish if that's the way she wanted to go. It was only right at the very very end that there was one scene remotely thrillerish and that one scene actually came across as quite cartoonish I thought. Is this one worth a buy? My opinion is no not at all. I gave it a two stars, I won't be reading it again and I'm not sure I'm going to read anything else by this author. Now I'm going to talk about The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel which also came out on the 10th of August. This book was not what I expected it to be. It's about a girl called Lane who when she was 15 spent one long summer living with her grandparents and her cousin at their amazing family estate in Kansas. I'm not going to tell you what the family secret is but what I really liked about this book is that the secret is actually revealed very early on. A lot of books like this will try to build suspense by alluding to some mystery that you don't find out until like 80% of the way through because then when the secret comes out it's not that interesting. This book doesn't try to build suspense that way. Very early on you find out what the secret in this family is and it is something so disturbing and twisted that you will instantly 
you will keep reading, not because you need to find out the mystery, but just because you need to see this unfold. It is a very dark book. It is weirdly a very mesmerising book. Is this book worth a buy? Yes. And buy copies for all your friends too, because you're going to need to talk to someone about this. Okay, now for my favourite book on this list, I have Bear Town by Frederick Backman, which is actually called The Scandal here in the UK. I bought this one in the US, where it has been out since April, but it came out in the UK on the 10th of August as The Scandal. I'm going to call it Bear Town just to confuse everyone because that's the version I have. Bear Town is set in a small town in Sweden where the high school hockey team is the focus of the whole town. The majority of the book spans the build up to the junior hockey game, and if they win this game, then the town will get funding to build a hockey school there, it will bring more people to the town. It's a really big deal to everyone in the town. There are loads of characters that we meet throughout this, and it's great to hear what hockey in this town means to each of these characters. I am not remotely interested in hockey or sports or anything, I wouldn't have thought I'd want to read a book about that. But right from the beginning, I found myself really invested in this hockey game, and I thought that's what the book was going to be about. However, it turns out that's not all this book is about. This book is also about the toxic masculinity that sports teams can breed. It's very sad and will make you very angry, but it also is hopeful and inspirational. This is actually the first Frederick Backman that I've read, and I've heard that most of his books are very uplifting, and that isn't lost in this one, even if it is a lot more gritty than I think the others are. In fact, by the end, I was crying on the plane with happiness. By the end of this book, I actually had a newfound love and respect for sports teams, even while it showed how terrible some of what they breed can be. Is this one worth a buy? Yes. If I could only recommend one new release this year, this would be it, without a doubt. I'm now going to go and read every book that Freddie Backman has ever written. After that, I read Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan, and that one came out on the 24th of August. Now, this one was set at a bookshop, which is always a great start for me, and it starts with a regular customer hanging themselves in the bookshop where the main character works. Now, the main character also has a backstory of her own, she had a very traumatic experience when she was younger, which is honestly like one of the scariest scenes I've ever read. And she has since run away from her past, she doesn't talk to her father anymore, she's tried to start a new life for herself and forget what happened to her. But the man who hung himself in her bookstore died with a photo of her as a child in his pocket. Creepy and weird. So she has to start investigating why this was, how is her life linked with his? It's a cool idea, and there's a lot of fun kind of treasure hunt stuff along the way, but the mystery was a little bit of a letdown. I actually did start to get bored with the book even while I was reading it, but I kind of kept going to see if there would be a really good twist at the end. But unfortunately, the ending definitely didn't make it worth it. So if you ask me, was this one worth a buy? I'm gonna have to say no. Next, I have a book that was one of my very highly anticipated, and this is Genuine Fraud by E. Lockhart. I've been excited to read this one ever since I saw it was coming out because I absolutely loved We Were Liars. I got this book at the launch party, I went and heard Emily Lockhart do a reading from it, and she gave me this book and signed it, which is really lovely. So I really wish I could stand here and rave about it, but I just didn't like it. What I will say about this book is that I loved the female heroine. E. Lockhart does a great job of subverting the white hetero action male hero, and she talks about that trope in the book, and I thought that her gender-swapped female action hero was done brilliantly. But that's pretty much all I liked about it. It's billed as, if you like Talented Mr. Ripley, then you'll like this book, but the problem is this book is the talented Mr. Ripley. So there was no suspense for me because pretty early on I recognised what book it was and then everything played out exactly as I knew it was going to. What's frustrating is that I really like E. Lockhart, I love her writing, and I think that if she had come up with her own new original story, then the combination of this backwards technique plus the protagonist would have made this a really fun book, but the plot just made it a huge letdown for me. So was this one worth a buy? If you don't know the story of Talented Mr. Ripley, then maybe yes. But if you do know it, I'm gonna have to say no. I'm so sorry, because I really wanted to like this one. Now, for another book that was very highly anticipated, I have They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera, and this one came out on the 5th of September. I have read all of Adam Silvera's books so far, he's just my absolute favourite YA writer of the moment, and he writes very interesting premises. So in this one, it's a world where, on the day you're going to die, at around midnight, you will get a phone call telling you that this is your last day alive. So then you can use that day to do everything you've ever wanted to. And this book is a love story between two people who both get the phone call at the start of the book. So you know that they are both going to die by the time the story ends. 
but they find each other on an app which pairs people together so that they can spend their last day with somebody fun and new. And they basically just go on adventures. They go around resolving all the things that they want to do in their life and also trying the new things they've never had the chance to try before. It was a really sweet romance. It was also a lovely depiction of friendship, which I always find in Adam Silvera's books. He always has really good portrayals of friendships. And it was also very cleverly done. As well as the two main characters, we're introduced to a lot of other characters along the way and all of their lives intersect on that day in sometimes very subtle ways, sometimes much more dramatic ways, and I really enjoyed kind of guessing how they were going to intersect or being surprised when a character showed up in somebody else's storyline. Is this one worth a buy? Of course. And go and buy his other two books while you're at it because they're all amazing. And then finally I have the amazingly titled Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows by Bali Kawa Jaswal. This book came out on the 7th of September in paperback. It's been out for a little while in hardback, but I hadn't heard of it before. And it's basically like the book version of Calendar Girls. It's about a British Indian woman who signs up to teach a creative writing course to other older Indian women with the idea that she will bind all their stories together and create an anthology. But when she starts the class, she discovers that the stories these women really want to tell are their erotic fantasies. And it's great fun! One thing that I really, really liked about this book is that Nikki, who's the teacher, she is a more westernised, modern Indian woman. But she isn't the one who liberates these older Punjabi widows and teaches them to express their sexual fantasies, that all comes from them, and I thought that was really cool. Though on the flip side, it did make the main character Nikki's character pretty boring. I actually think it didn't really need to be told from her perspective at all. It would have been more interesting to have taken a few of the widows in the class storylines and tell it from their perspectives, because they were really driving what happened, so it made Nikki a little boring to read about. Was this one worth a buy? This is going to be another of my maybes. I really, really enjoyed it, I thought it was a lot of fun, but I did also think it was a bit silly and I found myself rolling my eyes at some of the bits. Not in the erotic stories part of the storyline, that side I actually loved. It was the more serious side of the story that came across a little bit silly at times. So if you're looking for something light-hearted and easy to read, then yes, I'm really glad that I read this one. But if you do buy it, be prepared for a few cringy eye-rolling moments. So those are all the summer releases that I've been reading and I'd love to know if you read any of those and if you disagreed with me, let me know. Or if there are any other books that came out this year that you have to be recommending to everyone. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button for new videos every Friday. See you next time!